Today, we're shooting with miniatures. I'm your host, Mike Appel. Now, if you don't want to play, just go to Hue, and then change the hue of it. Welcome back to Film World. Today, our subject is free filmmaking software. Before we get into today's episode, I've got some news about the show. You may have noticed the opening title was different, and it had the name Premiere Prep. Hmm. The reason why it says Premiere Prep instead of Film World is because Film World is now the name of the channel, not the show. So Premiere Prep is a show within the channel. I did this so that it will be open to different shows being on the same channel. So if you have any ideas for some more shows, please tell me in the comments below. Now today is our first viewer request of the series. It comes from David McSween. If you don't know who he is, he has a great YouTube channel that you can go directly to by clicking here. Right there. Check him out. But watch this show first. Now when shooting with miniatures, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what model do I use? There are three routes you can go when picking a model. You can go with something completely built already, a kit that you buy from a store and put together yourself, or you can make it completely from scratch. The third is what I did. Now here are some photos of the, me making my model. As you can see, the base, or you know, the fuselage of the ship is some cups. I got a package of three from Dollar Tree and I cut one in half, inserted it into the top of the cup, and hot glued like crazy. Put in a ton of hot glue in there. But it worked and it looks pretty good. Uh, for the little engine pods you see on the side, those are actually dowel rods, two different sizes that are glued together with a nut put in the front and of course painted. Now all the details I did using black Sharpie marker. I, it's kind of a quick, easy way to do it but it worked pretty good for my case. At the back on the engine manifolds, you can see the little tracker markers. I have a square one, a triangle one, and a circle one, all different colors. These are used for tracking, that way I can add lens flares or whatever other kind of effect you want to add to the engines. And after I put it all together and painted it with two different kinds of paint, this is my finished result. It's kind of rough, but all in all, I kind of like the way it turned out. I'm pretty pleased with it. So go ahead and design your model and then build it or buy one or build one from a kit. It's up to you and it's up to what you want to use in your film. Like if you're going to be doing something like the USS Enterprise, it'd probably be best to buy one. Now the next question is kind of obvious. You need to ask yourself, how are you going to shoot it? Well, of course, it's going to have to go with the way you want your film to go. So if you want it like rushing by the screen, that'll be done one way. If you want it to kind of just kind of float along the screen or do a turn, that'll have to be done another way. Eric Beck from Indie Mogul a long time ago, I saw his episode a while back and it was pretty good, but he said to move your camera to get your ship look like it was moving. It honestly didn't look very good. I mean, it looked like it was being shot on a green screen while holding the camera. Well. I've got a way to fix that. You shoot it with three different forms of shooting. The first way is on string. This is probably the most obvious way to shoot a miniature model on a green screen because you don't have to do very much special compositing. You don't have to do like really any masking except to cut out the edges that, you, that are not green screen. And it's just all around easy. But there are problems with it. Like as you can see here, my model kept tipping over and was shaking a lot. So like I'd get it to rush by the camera, it'd come and swing back into frame. That's the biggest problem when shooting with your uh, ship on a string. The second way you can shoot your model is on a pole. I made mine out of extra dowel rod from building my model and putting a bolt on the top of it and then putting green tape around it, that way I can you know, green screen it out. And then with a corresponding nut on the bottom of my 
uh, model, I'm able to screw it on and control it with it. And this worked, this worked pretty good, except for the fact that my green screen tape was pretty far off the shade of green that I had on my actual green screen. So that made it a real pain in the butt in editing. I had to mask out the entire thing for pretty much every frame. So if you can get any green tape or maybe even some fabric that's the same color as your green screen and you know glue it on there or something like that, that would be a lot better. Another problem I had with green tape was it would reflect too much or you know it was too shiny so there'd be a bunch of white spots all over it from the light and that would like just show up randomly throughout the green screen composite. The third way is to shoot your model on a static stand and moving your camera. Now how is this more helpful than something else? Well if you want to get something like the Enterprise for instance when they wanted it to go to warp speed they would like you know have the camera zooming by at a fast speed while the ship was you know stationary. The truth is you can get a lot of your shots with your camera moving like they did in like uh, Eric Beck did but if you're not careful it can really look like junk. So I find it a lot easier and you can get a lot more uh, control out of it if you're moving the actual ship. How are you going to light your model? Well of course you want to light it according to what your scene is but what happens if you're shooting on a green screen and you got like a star going around in the background? You do want of course to have light interaction with your model. There are two ways you can do this. One is have an actual physical light on set that swooshes by and goes across your model. Or in post-production you can add something like a dilate a road node or you know, dilate a road filter for those of you who might use after effects or something. But just dilate a road and kind of get spillage over it and then you know just create a light spill on the edge of your uh, composite and this will do a pretty good light reflection for your model. When editing your model just green screen like normal okay uh, mask things out put it into your scene you can of course make things really nice and fancy with some motion tracking which always makes things look a lot nicer and a lot less green screen. Um, that's pretty much it. Make sure you use a color spill removal node if you're using blender or you know, just take away the color spill that way you don't get any weird green looks on it no matter what you're doing if you're shooting on a green screen you don't want green edges that makes it very obvious that it's on a green screen Alright, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Next week, we're going to be going over something pretty cool. We're going to be talking about how you can make your next production look a lot more cinematic with the use of a wide aspect ratio. So tune in for that next Friday. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, that's the best way to keep up to date with Film World's channel, and now for Premiere Prep. Also. Also, make sure that you comment down below. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about the, you know, the whole show. Uh, give me your thoughts about having Film World as a channel and then having Premiere Prep as a separate show. And also, make sure you tell me a show that you would like to see on here. Thank you very much for watching. I am your host, Micah Pendleton. Catch you next time. Today, we're shooting with miniatures.